So I think when we look at the MPN therapy space, it's it's important to put it in context of of kind of what has happened over the past decade. You know, we we got the approval of rexolitinib in 2011. This is you know a, a JAK inhibitor that does a great job of reducing spleen size and and improving disease related symptoms. Um, you know, we've had a large gap between the the first and second approval. The second approval of fedratinib, another a JAK inhibitor that does a good job of, of um, improving spleen size and and reducing symptoms. But other than that, we don't really have too many approved therapies. And we're, we're extrapolating from, from other diseases to, to treat those patients that aren't well served by jack inhibitors. So patients that maybe have low, low blood count, patients that have more accelerated or blastate disease, patients that really don't have you know, the clear signs and symptoms that respond to jack inhibition. So I think within myelofibrosis, we're going to be focusing on those underserved patients, those patients with cytopenias. And that's where you see the development of things like loose patercept and pacritinib and, and mamalotinib and, um, and palabrasib. These are, these are agents that seem to have activity in myelofibrosis, but may also reach out to those patients that, that aren't well served by our current therapies. Um, and alternatively, I think that we're going to see more of a push for treating these chronic phases, phases of disease, polycythemia vera, ET. I think that we're going to see an increasing push towards early intervention um, and, and hopefully, you know, come up with ways to modify this disease to, to kind of halt the progression and, and keep this in the chronic phase or, or potentially act even earlier uh, in, in the disease process.